Hey everyone, Tech Steve here, and we're gonna do a run and gun type of video where I have two cameras set up, and I'm gonna try to do a full review without all the special effects and all that good stuff. On this video, we're gonna go a little bit smaller with this TV. This is the Hisense A6N, which doesn't have the mini LED and all that good stuff, but how good of a TV is it? We'll check it out. Now keep in mind, this is still a 4K UHD TV. It's powered by Google and it has you know, all the good applications. And the interesting thing is that this TV only cost me $169 at Best Buy at the time of this video. I'll leave the links in the description below if you wanna check it out. But being that this is a 43 inch, they do have it all the way up to 85 inches. So again, all the information will be in the description if you wanna see the different sizes. Now one thing I wanna point out is that all of them are VA panels with direct backlights. It's gonna be a little bit thicker, but the 75 inch uses an ADS IPS panel, just so you know. And that's gonna give you better viewing angles. But to be honest, there's a lot of features that's really looking interesting. For example, you have 4K upscaling, full array backlights, 120 hertz motion, gaming mode, Chromecast, Apple AirPlay, HomeKit, DTS. So there's a lot to be said here about this television. And it has the voice command remote control and you don't even get voice command on a samsung du 6900 or 7200 pretty interesting now one thing about this tv i will tell you that it is light as a feather being a 43 inch i didn't got so used to doing larger tvs that you almost forget about these bedroom sized televisions and you can even put this in your kitchen comes with these little plastic feet didn't expect much for the money and it comes with this bag of goodies which includes a remote control Batteries, power cord, quick setup guide. And I am serious, this TV is light as a feather. Look at that. Yeah, don't get scared, it's not going anywhere. So on the bottom of it, it's got these uh, little tiny speakers here and I don't expect to have good audio. And it's got a little press button here so you can get through some of the basic menus. And then, again, we just screw the speed in right there. Man, we're cooking with hot oil. For $169 for a 43 inch, looks like it has some pretty good inputs. Of course, we have Wi-Fi built in. You're gonna find a reset button right up here in case it locks up. Uh, looks like we have three HDMIs, check that out. And it does have an HDMI eARC, so you can hook up Dolby Atmos soundbar. We have a couple of USBs over here, TV tuner, fiber optic, LAN connection. And then we have a headphone jack and old school audio video inputs. For anybody who has those old consoles or anything like that, look at that. You have everything you need. Now you know we're about to get some glare when we get the screen, so I have a couple little things set up here in the studio, but this reminds me of the fact that Samsung DU6900 only has two HDMI inputs. You don't get any fiber optic outputs. You don't get any of the stuff that this has, and it costs more money, which is kind of interesting. And check this out. It even has a screen protector on it. Being this little tiny TV. So, there's the unboxing on it. Let's go ahead and get it set up and uh, turned on so we can take a look at the picture quality. I got everything set up, just added my Gmail account as well as my Wi-Fi, and this is the operating system. And one thing I can tell you, I wasn't expecting much, but the TV has a little bit of lag to it. Once you give it a minute or two, it gets a little bit faster, just so you know. Now you do have features like built in antenna, plus you have Google TV. I showed you guys this a million times. And if you go over to the side, you do have access to the Android app store that has features like remote play for your PlayStation, Vida channels, DirecTV, Macs, pretty much everything that you can think of when it comes to applications. Now going to settings, this is a feature I really like. A lot of times Google TV doesn't switch to enhance on some of the models and this has an automatic feature which Hisense adds to pretty much all their TVs now so I really like that and if you don't have this turned on basically if you hook up a 4k device it will not show 4k only 1080p so that's cool that they added that feature in there under general you have different picture modes we'll go and switch this over to theater because a lot of people like that and it does have filmmakers mode that you can see right there and check this out, this TV even has a calibration setting. Now it doesn't have the Kalman capabilities, but you still can go in here and adjust everything if you have all the settings. But there's a few last things I wanna check in here. And one of them was the operating system. And look at this, you do get the latest and greatest Android 12. Now it doesn't have a lot of storage in it, which I wouldn't expect at the price point, but you're talking 5.9 gigs. 
It even has an ambient mode so you can have it display in different pictures of Google's cloud or you can even connect it and have your own family pictures connected as you can see right there. And there's a couple of them, including a custom AI art that just came out for the new operating system. You can also cast items to it. And here's that Apple Home Play and HomeKit setting. You can even share the content to other devices, which is cool, and a turbo mode so it starts up pretty quickly. And yes, it does have a feature where you can pair your headphones to it. You can see that the remote control is Bluetooth, so you don't have to point it at the TV. So this TV has a lot of cool features, but let's get into some testing to see how well it performs. So here's YouTube TV. I have it in sports mode, and I think the colors look really natural on this television. It's actually pretty impressive. The fact that you can have a TV like this at a low price, and for a basic television, I think it looks pretty decent. Not saying it has perfect black levels or anything like that, but if you look at the colors, they pop, and this would be great for someone who wants to put it in their bedroom or something like that. So I think you'd be pretty happy with it for just a general use television. Next, I want to pull up Disney Plus, and right now the TV is in SDR mode, and this is what I want to show you. To the naked eye, you won't really see this too much, but if I crank up my ISO, you can see the backlights right here on the top and bottom. Now keep in mind the ISO is very high on the camera, but this is amplifying what you can see as far as the backlight. So if you plan on getting really dark levels, you gotta keep in mind that this is a budget television. But let's go ahead and just play a couple of demos and we can take a look at it and see how it really looks uh, just playing content. Now besides the backlights, I would say that the colors on the television is pretty good. So if you're just watching your regular TV content, I think you'll be just fine with it. Uh, but let's take a look at some of these picture modes. I'll find the scene here and pause it so we can take a look to see how the different picture profiles are. So as you can see right now, it's in theater mode. Here's filmmakers mode, get a little bit softer. Here's vivid mode, which is a lot more brighter. Now keep in mind, this TV doesn't have very high nits. I would assume that it's around 300. So it would probably be okay for most people. But there's some different settings in there for you. And again, if it was me, I would use this for a bedroom TV, not necessarily a main TV in my living room, even though you can get it in an 85 inch, just uh, something to consider if you're looking for a budget based television, what to expect. Now I am using Apple TV and one of the benefits of this for me is that I have all my applications preloaded, but let's go and turn on HDR, see what we get. And one thing you'll notice at the bottom here that this switch over to HDR theater mode so we can test it out a little bit more. So let's go back to the movie. And here's the picture profiles. We have standard, a lot cooler look to it. We have energy saving mode, makes it a little bit darker. Also, let's take a look at those backlights. I'm gonna crank the camera up just a little bit here. As you can see, the backlights are not as bad up in this area, but you still get it right there in that little gray area right there. And then we have sports mode, gaming mode, HDR theater again, filmmakers mode. So this TV doesn't have IMAX and features like that, but again, for the average person, I think this TV is fully loaded and you're gonna get a decent picture out of it. So now we're gonna test the input lag on this TV and for some reason, it's green. It's always been like this black looking color, but as you can see right there, PC gaming mode and a good reading is less than 30 milliseconds for a television. 9.3 milliseconds. That's really good, especially for a basic television. And keep in mind, this is a 1080p 60 frames per second tester, but it's been over reliable for about four years now. All right, so now I brought over Xbox Series S and we're gonna check out the lag and everything on this one. So let's go ahead and change it to the right settings. So we got on PC game mode. And keep in mind over here, this TV does have a game bar. Check that out. Over here, you can see it's gonna show frames per second, HDR, auto low latency. There's a couple more settings over here. And again, this is a very economical television, so very impressive for the features that it has available in it. All right, so let's go through this real quick. You can see that it does support 4K at 60 frames per second. It doesn't support 120 frames per second, but it will support Dolby Vision gaming, which is a plus. Again, this TV is very economical has auto low latency and variable refresh rate. How much more can you ask for? And again, with that Dolby Vision Gaming, you have access to everything you need in this particular television. Now, since I always try this, I'm gonna override the HDMI settings 
but we're gonna see if we can get 120 frames per second out of it, even though this is a 60 hertz panel. So let's go ahead and hit the 120 hertz. And what do you know? This TV will do 1440p at 60 frames per second and 1080p at 120 hertz. What more can you ask for in a budget television? This is a Tech Steve audio test for the next few moments. Sit quietly and experience the range of this TV's audio capabilities as we test the boundaries of sound. Now, as expected, this TV doesn't have a lot of power, but it has a couple things like your DTS Virtual X. You can choose all these different sound modes or automatic. You also have advanced features where you have an equalizer, as you can see right there. And you can also choose if you're wall mounting it so it can optimize the sound, which is okay. For those annoying commercials, it does have an auto volume control and it does have lip sync, so you can basically synchronize the voices if you get some type of audio delay where the picture doesn't sync up with the audio. You also features like Bluetooth capabilities, you have that wired headphone output, and if you listen to a podcast, an audio source at night, you can just listen to the audio and turn the TV screen off, which is a cool feature. And just so you know, when it comes to gaming, I forgot to mention this, that you do have these controls inside of here, including a PC sync, so it makes the images much smoother when using a computer. And speaking of using it for a computer monitor, it actually looks really nice. I was very surprised just to see how clear it looks. I mean, I have it hooked up to just a basic Dell computer and I think everything looks pretty clean. As you see here, it's pretty responsive. And this would probably be great for somebody who's looking to have a combination of a PC as well as a television all in one. So I'm actually pretty impressed with how clean this looks and the fact that it has a PC mode is actually built for it. The last few things I want to show you here is upscaling. Here we have a 480p signal. And one of the things I always look for if we can expand the picture. So let's go down here and take a look. A lot of times you need to hit edit. And then we have this feature over here called picture size. We'll go ahead and turn that on and then we can look at the different sizes. So you have a zoom mode right there four by three auto. So it will not fill the screen up, but at least you have some options to zoom into the picture. Now here's a 720p signal on it. It looks even better than the 4K as you can see. So in my opinion, upscaling on this television is pretty decent. And I think you'll be okay as far as looking for any type of blurry screen or anything like that. But 1080p is really what upscaling was made for. But this 4K signal right here is gonna be your best quality on anything. And you can find it in sources like Netflix, Prime Video, Hulu, all those type of sources will show 4K. If you use an IPTV, a lot of those are rebroadcast signals and it really hurts the resolution even though I know in some cases you can get a lot of free content for one price. And here's just some demos playing on it. And this TV does have a really good picture as you can see right here. So if you really deciding if you wanna get this television, you gotta look at those savings that you're getting. And even compared to more expensive television, Hisense is really giving you a great bang for your buck. A lot of people are always saying that the reliability is not there and stuff like that. But to be honest with you, if you're looking at $169 for this 43 inch television and you went out and bought yourself a nice steak or something like that, it costs you $100, this TV is gonna give you enough longevity where I think you're gonna get your value out of it. Now, when you think about it, a lot of these companies are making these very basic televisions that don't have half the features of this TV. I'm just gonna say and predict this, that they need to watch out or they need to start giving you all the features that you can get in such a basic television like this that Hisense producing and putting out on the market because I think a lot of people are, are gonna be buying TVs like this to get a great picture and save themselves some money, especially for bedrooms, garages, 
or even living rooms if you're just not into TVs but you want something to watch from time to time. So here's the viewing angles on the television. As you can see, we're right in front of it. That's gonna be your sweet spot. If we go off axis, you're gonna see some coloration. So if you really need those viewing angles, consider the 75 inch because on that one, you're gonna get the IPS panel that's not only gonna give you those better viewing angles, but it's also gonna give you better colors overall, but you might get some blooming in the process. And I will tell you that this TV doesn't have anti-glare coating, but it's not doing that bad, look at this. I was expecting for it to really shine on this television really bad, but again, we're talking about glare. It's not that bad. I've seen a lot worse, more expensive televisions. Before I end this video, I wanna leave you with this note right here. A couple of years ago, when I started reviewing television, this was considered a top of the line television, but because of OLED and mini LED and all that good stuff, it's considered low end, but a lot of people still have basic televisions like this in their house. So the way I look at it is that it's a good value for the right person. If you are really not into television, like my mother, uh, aunts, uncles, and they see a Black Friday sale, why not go with something like this? I think they'll be very happy with all the functionality of it. Another thing I want to point out is that Hisense is, again, offering a lot of value, even in an entry-level television like this. You're getting a gaming bar. You're getting up to 120 hertz gaming and 1080p, decent TV for computers, and you get the voice command and all the stuff, the newest operating system. And it makes you think, how can they do this for 170 bucks for a 43 inch? Just something to think about. But if you guys are interested in Picking up one of these, I'll leave all the links in the description below. This is not a sponsored video. I just be honest, I'm just gonna be honest with you guys. I'm just tired of spending $1,700 to make videos on one television where I can buy 10 of these and that's gonna probably be the future of this channel unless some manufacturers want to send me more higher end televisions to review. I'm Tech Steve, thanks all for watching and I'll catch you on the next one. Peace.